Hey guys, welcome back to another episode of I Am Legion for Dying Light 1 and 2. My name is Jason, the creator of the mod, and I'm here with another update showcasing another one of the tools that I've just released to the community. As some of you are aware, I'm currently working on eight different tools that I'm trying to get released by the end of the year, while also working on the 1.5 update. So the 1.5 update's coming along great. Lots of new legendary items coming. I can go ahead and just kind of scroll down the output list here so that you guys can see what's coming. I've got a ton of updates that I've been putting into this feature uh, or into this uh, application rather so that I'm constantly generating new content. And as that goes, I'm also going back and making sure that the balancing is where I want it because what the worst part of that is is like once you actually go and create all that content you find out that ah, oh, I missed this one little simple thing that I wish I had fixed first and then you have to go back and basically reprint all of these items uh, and so as I'm trying to go I'm trying to go group by group I now have an entire set of torso armor that is completely unique that has uh, skill sets that you can choose uh, and find around the world that are unique legendary uh, skill sets that are not in the game currently that are unique to this armor and uh, and now I've moved on to the headpieces and but let me show you a little bit of that here in a second but let me dive in first to this new tool that I just released so this was requested uh, by someone on the channel today and it's something that I already had planned for by the end of the year I wanted to take a break from churning out the armor today um, and just take a little break after work uh, and just relax by writing another application so here we go with another application so this one is something that I've had in, in the back of my head for a little while. I wanted to get this one out to you guys. So this one is a standalone executable. You can find it in the optional section uh, on the actual Nexus mods. Uh, and the idea behind this tool is, is that a lot of times when there are updates to the game uh, or you just want to be able to switch between the vanilla game and the modified game, you the biggest thing that is always a factor for these updates is the save games and making sure that your save, your save game data doesn't get corrupted. So what I wanted to do is go ahead and start down that road of learning how to make save game tools. So actually being able to go and modify save game files to where you could go and expand your inventory or whatever you might want to do. But then also how can you actually back up and restore those save game files and make that super simple. So I'm going to dive in and show you guys what this is capable of Basically, the idea is, is that it's going to store some of this data. So once you set it up the first time, that's really all it needed. Um, I'm going to go ahead and delete that so that you guys can kind of see what I'm doing here. Uh, so once we run that executable, you've just downloaded the executable. You've unzipped it. The first thing it's going to ask for is the save game location. This is the Dying Light 2 save folder location. You can find that in a lot of different places on my mod, but... Once again, you can find it here in the optional section. You can find it on the main page of the Nexus. It's right there. Uh, matter of fact, I think I put it on most of my YouTube videos, so it'll be on, the, on this YouTube video as well. So once you navigate to the appropriate location, it's going to be your Steam install directory, user data, your unique ID, the game ID, remote, out, save. Once you get there, you won't have this folder because that's a folder I'm creating. You'll just have this save folder. And what that save folder looks like when we actually go over and take a look is, and you'll see I've been doing manual backups with all my testing, and that's just been a pain in the ass. So this tool is coming in to alleviate that burden and make this a little bit simpler. So what we're going to do is I'm going to go ahead and clear out this folder as well. And so what you should see here is just these inside this folder if you have a slot used inside your game for every slot. So if, for example, you only have one main save game, you should only see this one file uh, here. And then this SBK file is actually the rollback file. So as long as you have this SBK, then you're able to roll back to this point. And so that's also super important that you make sure you hold on to that SBK so that you can roll back as you expect to. So let's go ahead and set this directory. So we found the folder and let's set that file. Once we do that, it's gonna go and it's gonna load in the application 
and immediately you're going to notice a couple of things. So the idea here is I wanted to give you some initial information immediately. I am actually parsing the hex strings from the actual save game data and turning that into actual, actual human readable data, which is pretty fun. Um, and once you load this in, you should immediately get the path set and then the amount of the save games found. And then the most important one is where I am Legion was detected. So how I'm doing this is by detecting in your inventory and your stash if any of my items are in there. And so if I find those items, then I'm basically flagging that save game and saying, hang on, you're using a modified save game. That doesn't necessarily mean that your game doesn't have I am Legion. This is still very early on that I'm learning how to do this with the hex code. So maybe I missed something. Just let me know if that's you know, give me feedback on this. I don't know if this is short proof, but what I've tested so far, this has worked out really well. So um, on top of that, I'm also giving you the spawn point location. So for a lot of you, that's not going to be very human readable, but I do hope that it helps of saying like, oh, okay, I know where I'm starting. This one, this slot is the one where I'm at uh, in the DLC content. Um, once you kind of identify which files are going to be your modded files and which ones are your vanilla files, and by vanilla, I mean ones that have not been modified by any mods whatsoever. Those are the ones that you want to try to hold on to in the event that at any point in the future, the mods that you're playing with start to become corrupted or not updated or whatever it is, and you actually experience that save game corruption. So you want to hold on to these vanilla saves and make sure that they don't get corrupted. So a good way to do that with this application is by going here and if it didn't already do so automatically, which it should do it based on what it detects. So if it detects that these save games have modified data, it's going to actually flag them as modded. So what you can do now is, is you can actually do a full backup or you can modify this. So say for example, you actually want this to be flagged as vanilla and you want it to be backed up into your vanilla folder. You can do that. Wouldn't recommend it if it detected I am Legion, just so you can make sure you maintain what save games have been modified and which ones haven't. Again, this does not apply to everyone else's mods on the Nexus. I, you know, I'm not responsible for any of their content. That's why this is called the I am Legion save game backup tool. It's specific to that. So you could still use it for everything else, but I'm just letting you know that feature is specific to I Am Legion. So once you're done setting everything how you want it, we can go ahead and create a backup name. So kind of the usefulness here is that say you want to do a new playthrough and you actually want to save it. You want to start releasing your own mod where you're releasing your save games, right? So if you wanted to actually create a series of save games, you could do that by just creating a backup name. So if we wanted to call this like mod unlimited resources, something like that. And then we wanted to target a specific save. So say we want to go make a mod that is about unlimited resources. We're going to go gather a bunch of resources and then upload that to the Nexus. We can go under backup slots and we can select which slot we want to back up or we can just do all of them. Honestly, these files are super small. It probably doesn't hurt to just do a all backup every time because what I've got, I've got on the back end is sorting these out to keep it clean. So if we go ahead and hit backup, what's going to happen is, is it's going to tell you what it's doing with each one of these, but it's going to send these files in different directions, so to speak. So it created this new folder called save storage. Underneath there, when you first load the application and you first set the save location, it's going to create these original files. So these are the save games that were originally there when I first ran the application. You can restore those at any time if you pull open your restore backup files. It's known as the initial backup. So at any time, if you want to load back to the state that you had at when you first ran the application, you can load back to that. There's going to be two additional folders called modded and vanilla. So inside the modded folder, you'll find this mod unlimited resources. And in here, you'll find all of the modified save games. So the one that's missing from here is save main zero because that one's flagged as vanilla. So if we go back and we look here, you have this vanilla folder as well. That's also got a label of mod unlimited resources. And there's our file to our zero uh, or our slot one rather. So then say we want to actually update 
uh, or load these back in. Say we're playing through the game and we want to be able to load these in uh, while we're playing the game or once we've exit. You may want to be careful with trying to dynamically do this while you're playing. I haven't tested it yet, but there was this one time where it was syncing with Steam and there was doing the cloud data that I did start to get a little weird save game corruption issue while trying to play the game and load in saves. Um, I was trying to modify it manually in the background and it didn't work out. So I don't know if that part of it works. Please let me do, know if it does. But for this, you can exit the game and then immediately reload to where you want to say or go back to by opening this backup file. Once you do that, you'll see here that it's sorted by modded and vanilla. So these are the four slots that you backed up. You don't have to uh, uh, restore all of them at the same time. You can select which ones you want to bring back. It's pretty simple if you want to bring all of them back by just going through. I use my scroll wheel on my mouse and just kind of scroll through the different ones and hit restore really quickly. But this will allow you to very quickly restore these saves back to their original point. As a point in case, if I delete these out of the save or out of this original save folder, I can actually go one by one and just hit restore. And it gave me the flag because it no longer detected those. I apologize. You want to make sure you're maintaining those files uh, in this initial location. We'll run that path again. We've got this initial backup again. I apologize. We're going ahead and hit restore. When we do that, it will go through and it will restore each one of those files. And you just want to make sure that you restore each one one at a time or all at once so that it loads back to where you wanted it to be. So another thing that you can do with this mod or with this application rather is say you want to go and you actually want to make these backups in real time while you're playing the game. Well, I wrote something for that so that you have a key bind so that when this application is running, the hotkey is shift F5. And at any time, so say for example, we load up DLC um, and we're in the DLC save game and we want to back up that file as we play. So we want to go through each part of the actual DLC campaign, make a backup, release it as a mod, great. So all we have to do is every time we, you know, use the, the bed or anytime we hit a major point in the campaign that we want to back up, all you have to do is hit Shift F5 and it's going to go and it's going to make that backup uh, into that folder and you'll now have that back up anytime you want to get access. So if you have not set a name, so for this one it's going to be vanilla, and if you have not set a name it's going to be default. Um, you do want to make sure that uh, you set that as much as possible to help differentiate. I'm still working on some of the, the things here of where when I hit that restore button it's resetting some of the values. Hopefully by the time you're watching this video, I've already worked out some of those kinks, but I did want to get this tool out to you guys very quickly so you could give me feedback, let me know your thoughts, uh, and we can go ahead and get some of these save games backed up before 1.5 comes out. Um, there may be additional official updates here in the future that we also want to make sure we have good backups before those land as well. So once we have these save games kind of starting to save. The idea here is that you should be able to go in here and just be, continue to save. So um, as you continue to save these files, it should go in and overwrite that one file. But kind of the idea here is that um, each one of those save points is kind of backed up in here. And I'm going to start making it to where the folders themselves start to get a number system. Um, I'm interested in your feedback here of what you would like to help keep that clean. So right now it's doing kind of an initial one and doing the name. So if we go in here and say this is new and then we run this again. You can see it shows up in here again. So for example, if you wanted to go in and by chapter, you wanted to actually label these different ones, you could go through and actually label them as you go and actually set it up through that. Whatever your preference is, let me know. Uh, really, this first pass is just designed for people that want to do their initial backups and save those. For those of you that want to do more saves more often, just let me know your thoughts on how you would like that to be best implemented. You can actually disable that key bind. So if you go in here and turn that off, uh, it will no longer pick up that Shift F5. Uh, and so that won't be 
watching in the background. So um, let me know what you think about features, things you'd like to see in the future. Uh, let me know how this works for you. As I said, I'm still rounding out the edge cases. Some locations may not show up. If you do end up with a save game where the location doesn't load, go ahead and send it over to me so I can actually parse through the, uh, through the save game itself and see why it didn't uh, get those values. But for the most part, this has worked out pretty well, and uh, I look forward to getting you guys this next set of tools. I look forward to 1.5 coming out here soon. Stay tuned for lots of exciting updates. There are a ton of new updates coming here very shortly. Huge shout out to my Patreon supporters. Thank you guys so much for your support. I will mention that this is one of the tools that I'm releasing to everybody for free and in the future i'll be writing specific software suites for patreon supporters as you determine things that you would like to see in the mod or things that you'd like to see for the applications please let me know everything will be set up to where in the future you will be able to get access to a lot of these files and a lot of these applications without any type of paywall on the way but i do want to make sure to write things for my patreon supporters to say thank you for all your their support as we go all right, thank you guys, and I look forward to catching up with each one of you here on the YouTube. Make sure to subscribe for more updates, and make sure to check out the Discord community if you're not a member. Thanks, guys. Talk to you soon.